Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Sisters and brothers, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries on this Good Shepherd Sunday, we remind ourselves that God has shown us his love and his mercy in the death and resurrection of Jesus, who is the Good Shepherd. We remind ourselves as we begin this Mass that we depend on that love and mercy. And so we pray, Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to new life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, 
Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ this Jesus whom you sacrifice. Now when they hear this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And now you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourself from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message was baptized and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. second letter of Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he, in, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not return threat. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sin and his body upon the cross, so that, free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for what you have gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your soul. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of, him, ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, Amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. When I was a kid, my grandparents, my grandmother and grandfather Spots, gave me the book All Creatures Great and Small by James Harriet. It's a classic. It's been a classic for many people for years and years. And it tells the story of a country vet in northern England adopting to life and living in the country. He'd grown up in the city and now had come to live in the country with these farm animals. And it tells story after story, charming stories, hilarious stories, about this young veterinarian coming to know what it's like to work in the country. It's a comfort book for me. It's one that I go back to when I want something that's light but joyful and fun. There's an image in there that pretty much teaches me everything I know about sheep, having never grown up on a farm, having never, having never known a sheep outside of a petting zoo. The story that James Harriet tells in this book, All Creatures Great and Small, goes like this. He had gone to a farm to give the young lambs their inoculations against various diseases. And so in the middle of spring, a time probably a little bit like this, they had separated all these young lambs from their mothers and put them in a pen and one by one were giving them their shots to inoculate them against various diseases. And the older sheep, the mothers of these lambs, are all outside the gate and they're all making a huge amount of noise. They're worried and concerned because they're separated from their sheep. So there are hundreds of mothers all like making sheep noises out of concern for the lambs, and the lambs are panicked and making all sorts of noise. There's a huge mess of noise in all these sheep in all these different places. And as James Harriet writes in the book, having never seen this before, in his mind, he's like, it's gonna take hours for these sheep to all separate out, for the lambs to find the right mother in the midst of all that crowd. Instead, he says, they opened the gate and it took about 30 seconds. The lambs found their mothers within about 30 seconds. The noise stopped and they calmly walked off to the hillside to graze. The lambs knew the voice of their mothers. They just knew. They were able to hear it. It's still the case that I've never known a sheep outside of a petting zoo, but it is also the case that I've been in other places and I've seen similar dynamics. I've seen, for example, when I was an athlete, being able to pick the voice of my coach out of a crowd. I've been able to see my friend's kids out in a busy playground or in a bowling alley or somewhere noisy where they're able to hear their mother or their father's voice penetrating through the noise and reaching them through all the other sounds going on. I've even been on the other side of that when I was a track coach and in the middle of a noisy meet where lots of people are screaming encouragement to the athletes, I was able to get my incredibly loud coach voice to penetrate the noise so that my athletes could hear and know what their next move was. They could recognize the voice. They could hear it. They could pick it out of all the signal. Out of all the noise that's going on, they were able to pick out the one voice that they needed to be listening to. 
And that's a core dynamic that we should be paying attention to in today's gospel. Today's gospel is about the shepherd who leads the sheep in the right direction. It's about the one who's the gate that the sheep enter through. And it's also about the voice that the sheep are able to hear above all of other voices. It is, to use a different image, it is the, the ability to pick out the signal in the midst of all the noise. And that, for us as a people of faith at this specific moment, and really at any moment in history, is not a bad image for us to sit with. It's important for a variety of reasons. Even if we weren't living through a re- uniquely difficult time, we always need to be reminded that we're surrounded with lots of noise. There are an awful lot of voices in our lives, and not all of them are doing what the gospel tells us that Jesus' voice does, that it comes that we might have life and have it more abundantly. There's a lot of noise that wants to do the opposite. There's a lot of noise that leads us to fear. There's a lot of noise that leads us to anger. There's a lot of noise that leads us to frustration. There's a lot of noise that leads us to distraction. There are a lot of different noises in our life. There are a virtually limitless number of voices. To maybe push it even a step further, it's probably not a bad thing for us to dwell on the fact that in the midst of all these voices that we hear on a day-to-day basis, whether through, whether wherever we hear them, there are voices that not only passively don't help us, there are voices that are actively unhelpful. There are voices that want us to be angry, want us to be alienated from one another, want us to be separated, want us to be frustrated, want us to be scared. They're voices that do actively do not want us to have life and have it more abundantly, as the gospel says, because they profit from it, because they benefit it from it in some ways. The invitation, the first invitation of the gospel that we get today is to pay attention to that. Where's the signal amidst the noise? Where's the voice that gives life in the midst of all these other voices? And how do we recognize it? We as a people of faith have to live in the world. We do live in the world. We go out into the world to bring light to the world that needs it. But that means that we find ourselves immersed in all these other noises on a day-to-day basis. And that means that we need to continually be cultivating the skill to know which voices to listen to. What voices have you been listening to lately? What are the loud voices in your life right now? What's the noise that fills your life? And what's the signal? What's the signal that is the voice of Jesus speaking through all the noise to speak a message of life and hope and life and God's great plan for all of us? It's not always a question just of listening to it. It's also a question of responding to it. How much do we entertain the voice of the noise? How much do we give that our attention, lend it our attention? And how much of that attention do we pay to the voice of the one that we know loves us, or the one that we know that cares for us? There's a second movement in the gospel, and also one that bears paying attention to this week. The first move might be about what it means to hear the voice of Jesus amidst all the other things. There's also a second move. There's a second move of what happens in the dynamic of the shepherd and the sheep. And it's worth our paying attention to the fact that Jesus says that he is the gate, but that the shepherd could also be us. In other words, we are, of course, the sheep. We are, of course, the ones who listen to the one shepherd who is Jesus. But there's also room within the metaphor for us to ask, are we by turns both the shepherd and the sheep? Are we by turns both the one who follows the voice of the one calling us, but also the one who's responsible for echoing the voice of Jesus to a world that needs to hear it? The answer is, of course. We are both by turns. We are both shepherd and sheep by turns. At different moments in our lives, we have different responsibilities for caring for people, for being the voice of God, for allowing people to hear the voice of God more clearly in a world that's pretty full of noise. And right now, we have the great benefit of knowing and looking at our world and knowing there are an awful lot of people who are playing the roles of shepherds right now. There are an awful lot of people who are working overtime to bring messages of comfort and hope and healing, to care for the many people who need care right now. 
We've talked a lot in the recent days, as we absolutely should, about people who put their life on the line for the sheep, for doctors and nurses and first responders. We also know that there are people who are making other kinds of contributions. The shepherds who are taking the extra time to make a phone call to somebody who might be lonely, to reach out to somebody who might be isolated, to make a Zoom call to somebody who hasn't seen a friendly face in enough time, the people who are going out of their way to care for others. We might mention teachers who have, in a very short amount of time, turned their life upside down to remember and realize how it is that they can teach in an online forum. There are many, many people who have played the role of shepherd. And in the midst of this specific moment in history that we're living through, all of us might have moments where we are the one who need to be cared for. But we also might find ourselves in a moment where we're doing pretty well. For in a moment that we need to be cared for, that's okay. What we anchor ourselves in at that point is knowing which voices to listen to, which are the voices of Jesus speaking to us, either directly in our prayer or through the voices of those around us who are caring for us. On the flip side, we might find ourselves in a place where we're able to be a shepherd for other people. And that might be the question to sit with. In those moments in this where I feel the strength and the courage that is given to me by the one who made me, how can I play the role of shepherd for other people? How can I take care of those who most need it? How can I be the voice of Jesus, the signal amidst all the noise that reaches through the noise and reaches somebody who needs to hear a message of hope and healing and grace and light and strength and courage? Because the gospel tells us very clearly what it is that Jesus wants. Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. How is it we are participating in that great work of God? Confident in a God whose voice reaches deep into our hearts and calls us to have life and have it more abundantly, we profess our faith in the one who made us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in a God who calls us through, calls us, who is the good shepherd and calls us, we raise our prayers to our loving God. Our response today is, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, help it continue to be a channel of peace, prayer, and compassion, uniting behind the example of Pope Francis, our good shepherd on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders around the world and here at home, inspire them to continue working towards a medical solution to the coronavirus and strengthen them in their efforts to ease the economic crisis it has caused. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For our St. Joseph and St. Francis Savior family, help us to recognize your voice calling us by name. In this time of separation, draw us closer together as your flock and deepen our commitments to serve one another. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the men and women working in essential capacities, bless the doctors, nurses, and the first responders who are guiding our welfare. Also protect grocery store clerks, delivery persons, restaurant workers, mail carriers, and all others providing essential services to those sheltering in place. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, in your compassion, lift them up and fill them with hope of better days yet to come, especially those suffering from anxiety and depression during this time of isolation. We ask you to bless all caregivers. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, gather them up in your mercy and grant them your peace. Comfort all those who mourn, especially those unable to be with their loved ones at this time. Today, we pray especially for Dino Tonelli, husband of Trudy Tonelli, and for James Sheridan, brother of Father Sheridan. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For those held in our special intentions today, Mary O'Connell O'Malley, Dominic and Carmen Savignani, Tara Fallow Kelly, Virginia Reagan, <clears throat> Hannah McNulty, Mary Ann Barry, Lisa Albrighton, Kate Hen, Donna Bailey, Noreen Tobin, Florence Duff, Mary Lowe Donahue, Julie Butler, and Conrad and Lucy Wolski. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Today's second collection is for our sharing parish in Haiti, Immaculate Conception. To you, O oh God, we lift our prayers. We lift them in great confidence and great hope, for we lift them in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become for us our spiritual drink. Please pray, sisters and brothers, that these gifts, yours and mine, may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration. They may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Joseph, St. Francis Xavier, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Blaise our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, together we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our day 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always kept free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faithfulness of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Wherever we are, wherever we happen to be, let's wish one another a sign of peace. Peace to those you might be watching with us, watching with you. Peace in your hearts, peace in your homes. Peace to everybody who is participating in this Mass. Peace to everyone who needs it. where we can't participate in the Eucharist by being present with it, by receiving it, it's good to remind ourselves of some of the important truths of our faith, that our baptism unites us to Christ, that our baptism makes us part of the body of Christ, that the Holy Spirit binds us together and makes us parts of Christ and parts of one another. That's a bond that can never be undone. It's a bond that nothing can separate, not distance, not anything. So while we're physically distant, we remind ourselves that spiritually we are as close as we ever are, and that God binds us together, and in the fullness of time, God will bring us together again. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed, how happy are we to be called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. This Easter time, we offer all of us a solemn blessing. So wherever you are, bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. It's a three-parter. The responses are amen. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, 
by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. The Mass is ended. Go and announce good news with your lives.